When you watch The Real Housewives for long enough, you'll notice that many patterns begin to emerge, one of these being the use of psychics. Psychics have played a surprisingly prominent role in stirring the pot on The Real Housewives across nearly every franchise, so I thought it would be fun to look at these storylines in depth and, of course, to rank them. Now, psychics on The Real Housewives are a bit of a Swiss army knife. They can serve many different roles. Sometimes they're played for laughs, sometimes they're deeply emotional, and sometimes they're a way to bring forward a dramatic story. Towards the end of the video, I'll discuss how believable I thought each psychic was, but let's start with the rankings. Just a heads up, these are super subjective. I'm really just ranking these based on how much I like each storyline. But now, let's get into the rankings. In dead last is Melissa Gorga from The Real Housewives in New Jersey, who gave us the asinine storyline of a psychic telling her she had a fake sister in season 9. Melissa is infamous for stretching for personal storylines, and this might be the worst of them all. After a medium tells her that her father wants her to know that she has a secret half-sister out there somewhere, she latches onto this like it's glue. She tells the ladies on the cast trip to Oklahoma, feeling that it's appropriate to bring up after newcomer Jackie has just opened up about her struggle with anorexia, and the other ladies are just like, okay. When Melissa tells her real sisters, they have the same reaction. Joe Gorga is rolling his eyes through this entire storyline as well. Nobody takes it seriously. Thankfully, Melissa doesn't fully commit to the storyline, so it ends up mostly fizzling out. She sloppily wraps it up in the finale by sending off her DNA to Ancestry in the hopes that her fake secret sister will do the same and they'll match. It was so dumb. She should honestly revamp her pop star career or something because the fake storylines just aren't cutting it, and Jennifer Aiden agrees. In 8th place, we have the ladies of Dallas who decided to visit a haunted house in season 4. The house is admittedly creepy and the ladies have a guide telling them about all the ghosts that live there. She gives them a pendulum to help them determine what a ghost is trying to communicate and the ladies have fun with it. After the group breaks up a bit, the psychic takes rookie cast member Carrie off for a private reading where she picks up on Carrie's troubled childhood growing up with a mother with alcoholism. When Carrie comes back in and opens up about this, Leanne takes the opportunity to talk about her own troubled childhood and the trauma Olympics begin. When Carrie suggests that Leanne should be positive, she loses it and the situation escalates into a full-blown fight. While all this is happening, we get some fun moments of Deandra, Stephanie, and Brandy being silly, which helps lighten the extremely heavy conversation taking place in the living room. The scene was fine and pretty par for the course for the Dallas ladies, but I just prefer the other storylines better, so it's ranked on the lower end. Seventh place goes to Robin Dixon from The Real Housewives of Potomac, who in season three hired a psychic to talk to her and her ex-husband slash boyfriend, Juan. Now, this is an incredibly emotional storyline. The psychic seems to be quite skilled and pulls forward the energy of Juan's mother. He talks about how the man thought to be Juan's father is actually not so, something Juan had been suspecting. He also picks up on his mother's battle with AIDS, which obviously is incredibly difficult to grapple with. His mother also says that she's happy that Robin and Juan are back together, which is a sweet moment. The psychic next pulls forward the spirit of a former friend who had encouraged Robin and Juan to make some bad investments and then later took his own life. This is a trauma that Robin has brought up before and obviously something she finds incredibly painful as it created a tremendous financial hardship and was a brutal betrayal by someone she thought was one of her very best friends. The psychic relays that he is content with his decision to take his own life, which is incredibly painful for Robin and Juan to hear. This is kind of a difficult storyline to rank, as it's incredibly raw and vulnerable. I didn't enjoy it in that there aren't any funny moments, but it's incredibly compelling to see the Dixons grapple with something so incredibly traumatic. We get to see a very vulnerable side of Juan in particular, which is not a side of himself we typically see on the show. My heart really went out to them, and I grew even more emotionally invested in their story after this scene. In sixth place, we have the seance from season 13 of The Real Housewives of New York. Now, this is probably my least favorite season of New York, but I think the storyline is incredibly tender and led us into the ladies' lives in a deeper way than we typically get. The housewives have traveled to Salem, Massachusetts for a cash trip and were really leaning into the witchy vibes of the area. Naturally, this meant they would be attending a seance conducted by a ragtag duo of psychics. But first, Lou, Ramona, and Leah decided that they needed to talk to Sonia about her drinking, which had reached a fever pitch when she had a meltdown about Banks and nearly got into a physical altercation with friend of that season, Bershawn. The intervention doesn't really take, as Sonia had already started drinking that night, but it left her in a heightened emotional state. When the seance begins, the psychics give off some strange vibes, and the ladies seem a bit guarded. It kind of makes you wonder why they even went, but whatever. Lou had a funny moment, not really buying what they're selling, but things start to open up when the psychics touch on Ebony and Leah's lost grandmothers, both of whom had just recently passed away. 
What really makes this moment, however, is when the reading begins for Sonia and Ramona. Sonia is notoriously caught up in her past, but it's always been limited to the life married into the prestigious Morgan family. We've heard about it ad nauseum during her tenure on the show, so it was a bit revealing when the psychic begins to talk about Sonia's relationship with her father. We learn that her childhood wasn't so bright and merry, and she was subject to abuse. Sonia gets quite emotional in talking about him, and it hit me that we really haven't heard too much about Sonia's childhood. I'm already a Sonia fan, but it deepened my love for her. The psychic then turns to Ramona and channels her brother. We've heard a bit about Ramona's relationship with her dad, but she also discusses the strain she felt in her relationship with her brother as an adult. I think that even though this season was lackluster, the storyline itself was pretty great. I loved learning a bit more about Sonia and even Ramona's background, and of course, I love the witchy vibes of the scene. Let's head down to Miami for fifth place, which finds us in season one, where we had a psychic feud between Mama Elsa and Larsa Pippin. So Mama Elsa, who is of course Marisol's mom, is not a psychic, but a self-proclaimed witch. She's really intuitive and has a knack at reading people. So this season was initially taped as a show about women in Miami throwing dinner parties rather than a housewife show. So we have a dinner party nearly every episode. In the episode in question, it's Marisol's turn. So she invites the other ladies, including Mama Elsa, over to her home. While the ladies are waiting for the cooking demonstration to begin, Larsa starts chatting with Mama Elsa about her psychic gifts. <laughs> Larsa is making it very clear that she doesn't believe in psychic abilities, but still continues to ask Mama Elsa what vibe she picks up off of her. Mama Elsa tells Larsa that she picks up that she's worried about a man. Larsa visibly recoils from this accusation, deflecting to her worries about her sons. Mama Elsa maintains that no, it's a man, but she'd rather not talk about it right now. After the ladies sit down to dinner, the talk of Mama Elsa's abilities come up once more. She tells Larsa she thinks she's a good person but is emotionally immature, an assessment that Larsa does not agree with, launching her into an attack on Mama Elsa. She points out that she's only been married once while Elsa's been married four times. Things start escalating with Mama Elsa reverting to Spanish, saying that things will happen to make her believes in the vibe she picks up and she will be poor in 10 years. This obviously ends up causing tensions between Marisol and Larsa. It's clear that this really, really gets to Larsa. All right, for fourth place, we're going to cross into international waters and head on down to Melbourne. For those unfamiliar with the Real Housewives of Melbourne, we've got a psychic on the cast with Jackie Gillies, wife of international rock star Ben from the band Silverchair. We've also got a lawyer on cast, Gina Liano, who deals in fact. Obviously, these differing outlooks on life were going to clash. So this storyline begins in episode one of season one and essentially spans the entire season. Jackie is new in town, so she's meeting all of the ladies and telling them all about her psychic abilities. Gina tells her she doesn't believe in psychics, but still challenges her to display her gifts. Jackie mentions that she can tell if someone is having an affair and reveals that it could be the partner of someone in the group. Now, Gina is in a geographically impossible relationship. Geographically impossible. As her partner lives in the U.S., she asks Jackie if her boyfriend is cheating on her, and Jackie says she already knows the answers and mentions that Gina has relatives who have passed who agree. Gina seems resigned to this initially. All seems to be fine until we find out that Gina has been flown out to visit her partner, and she's suddenly taking a very aggressive stance against Jackie. Gina and her fellow housewife Lydia discuss the issue, and Gina says that she doesn't believe Jackie is correct in what she says. Lydia then told Jackie what Gina says, which starts off the first real bit of conflict on Melbourne. When the two meet up, Gina lets Jackie know what she thinks of her psychic abilities. Look, I'm very accurate. I know I'm yeah. a very good reader. I could see, you know, your grandmother's standing behind that's you. That's not my grandmother, darling. That's no, I see. The season devolves into a gang up on Gina, with one season wonder Andrea leading the charge. At the reunion, it's revealed that a legal letter was sent to the ladies telling them to stop talking about the speculation that Gina's boyfriend was cheating on her. I think this is in part what really turned the ladies against Gina, because that's got to be scary to be served a legal letter. I do think that the gang up did kind of help Gina as it garnered sympathy from the audience. The majority is almost always going to root for the underdog. Plus, Gina's such a force with the hair and the glam and the quick wit and the snappy one-liners that she's going to have fans no matter what. I did find myself feeling less sympathy for her as I rewatched while I was researching this video, as Gina's just so stubborn and really inconsistent with Jackie. I think the prediction really did get to Gina, though, as she and her partner did break up for a time, though they did get back together eventually. Third place finds us in Atlanta for the Season 10 Elephant Party. So early on in this season, tensions had been running hot, especially between Kenya and Kim Zolciak, who had returned as a friend of this season. Nini felt like there was a lot of elephants in the room, so she called the ladies all together in an attempt to clear them and get the energy back to a better place. 
To assist with the process, she calls Mbele, who describes herself as a medium. My name is Mbele. I am a medium. The ladies slowly trickle into the event to be met with conflicting welcomes from Mbele. Hey, how are you? How are you? Mbele. Mbele. Hi, Cynthia. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. She has a rule that there are to be no phones, which didn't go over well with the ladies, specifically Kim. When the reading gets going, not everyone is being very respectful. Mbele has an odd method of tapping into the energy of someone. She's going through the ladies one by one, and everything's going mostly fine until Kim tells Cynthia not to worry about the remarks on her relationship, and Mbele snaps back, much to Kenya's delight. Kim and Mbele start to get into a kind of spiritual off. I am from a higher power, I can promise you. Kim starts name dropping all of the fabulous mediums who have read her, and Kenya goes off on Kim. In a bizarre turn of events, Mbele offers to give Kim a bath to get her energy better aligned, to which Kim declines. This is the final straw for Mbele, who puts out her sage and exits stage left. The night ends with a sit down between Kim and Nini, in which Kim accuses Nini of being on drugs. The two are trying to get back to a better place, but it's just not the time. I'm personally still holding out hope. I love the frenemy ship between the two of them and think they play off of each other in the funniest ways. Ultimately, the storyline is amazing. I love Mbele's intensity and loved her getting into it with Kim. I love Candy's commentary and attempts to pull the group together. Plus, the event space is adorable, and it's fun to see so many of Atlanta's Titan housewives all together. In second place, we have Cancer Gate from The Real Housewives of OC, season 10. This is kind of a love it or hate it type of storyline, with one camp finding it super compelling, while others think it's just a bit too dark. So, this revolves around Vicki Gunvalson and her boyfriend at the time, Brooks Ayers. Brooks had been on the scene for a few seasons and had rubbed many people the wrong way. He had driven a major wedge between Vicky and her daughter Brianna, as well as with her BFF Tamara. So when season 10 rolled around, Vicky shared the devastating news that Brooks had been diagnosed with cancer. We see scenes of her being very upset about this and him trying various cures and treatments. So the season's going along like normal until Tamara decides to take Heather and millennial newcomer Megan King Edmonds to see her psychic. The psychic isn't great. He gives vague info about Heather's grandmother and claims Megan will have one child, which we now know is wrong, she is three, but when the ladies ask about Vicky and Brooks, he drops a bomb. He just doesn't see him having cancer. This is obviously shocking to the ladies, and their suspicions grow at the next group event. Tamara hosts a workout at Cut Fitness, and Brooks stops by to say hey to the ladies on his birthday. Everyone is surprised to see him eating cake and drinking sake, which apparently are no-nos to those who have cancer. After he and Vicky leave, Megan tells Shannon about what the psychic said. This greatly upsets Shannon, who's been the sole surviving Brooks defender. When she and her husband David go out to eat with Brooks and Vicky, she totally spirals. At this point, Megan is taking all of the heat and is being framed as the bad guy, but when Brooks confronts her at an Aries-themed party and trashes Tamara in the process, things begin to turn. The women start pointing out that he's not really making any efforts to treat his life-threatening disease, which is a little bit suspect. Shannon has made calls to some of the best doctors, but Brooks never follows through with them. When she asks Vicky about it, Vicky gets defensive and attacks her, leaving Vicky on an island. In an effort to quell the questions, Brooks shows Tamara a printout of his PET scan. It's riddled with typos, but Tamara has no medical training, so she can't do too much to question it. Tamara tells the ladies about what Brooks showed her, which only makes things worse, as they think it's weird he would show Tamara over Heather's husband, famed doctor Terry Dubrow, or even Shannon, who is constantly having medical tests done. This is the final nail in Vicky and Brooks's coffin, and all hell breaks loose at Tamara's baptism, which serves as the finale party. Megan reveals that she called Newport Imaging, and they don't do the test that Brooks claims he had done. Shannon produces her own PET scan reports to show that they look much different from Brooks's. It's a mess. Vicky is brought in backup to the party, who end up going after Shannon about her husband's affair, and Vicky ends up offending the myriad Christians at the baptism by equating her plight to Jesus's. Well, I'm being nailed to the cross like Jesus was, and he did nothing wrong. He's Jesus Christ, and he did nothing wrong. He was nailed to the cross. That's how I feel. The reunion goes no better, as Vicky's daughter Brianna, who is a nurse, goes in on Brooks. Vicky also reveals that the two have broken up. They end up getting two separate Sit Down with Andy episodes, with both Brooks and Vicky getting one. Brooks maintains that he doesn't have cancer in his until he finally reveals that he embellished the story later. In Vicky's Sit Down, she's forced to admit that he didn't have cancer, but maintains that she didn't know. 
the accusations that she knew the whole entire time and that she was just going along with the storyline for the casseroles and the sympathy still follow her. She even had to defend them in her final season, season 14. I know they're kind of anybody in my life! You're not oh my God. God. You were kind! You were kind! Oh my God. I think that this is a super compelling storyline, and I love seeing Detective Megan in action. I think a lot of us are fascinated with illness figures because it's such a low place to go to gain sympathy. It's also something that's really hard to call out because you really risk looking like an asshole if you do, as we saw with Megan. Vicky really made a mess for herself as she had Kelly Dodd as her lone ally in the next season until Tamara finally forgives her. As far as the psychic aspect, I think it's a little suspect. I think what was really going on is production and the ladies were asking questions about the Brooks situation, but there really wasn't a graceful way to bring it up, so bringing in a psychic was a good avenue to expose the whole thing. It was kind of random how he was introduced, and he's obviously not very good since he mispredicted the amount of kids Megan would have, but still, as is canon, that's what broke this crazy storyline. And in first place, to I'm sure nobody's surprise, is the dinner party from hell, which occurred in season one of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So at this point in the season, Camille Grammer and Kyle Richards had been viciously feuding. After a disastrous trip to New York, Camille decides to host a pizza party at her home, with her friend, the psychic medium, Alison Dubois, taking the role as the guest of honor. Before the party, we get a really funny scene of her calling the ladies to invite Can them. Can you hear me now? No? <sighs> it's Camille. Oh my god, it's her answering machine. Oh my god, that is so funny. That's brilliant. Lisa, that's brilliant. That's your answering machine. I totally bought into it. I thought you weren't. I thought you couldn't hear me. Of course, Kyle is shocked to receive the call and asks if she can bring along a friend. Once the ladies arrive at the party, we hear a bit more about Alison Dubois, who is so famous she's been on Oprah and has scientists who study her. She also has a show based on her life, produced by Camille. Patricia Arquette plays me. Things really get going when the ladies sit down to eat, massive cocktails in hand. Camille just can't place where she knows Kyle's friend Faye from until it hits her. Oh, you know how I know her? I saw her naked in Playboy. That's how I know Faye. The tables are turned when it's revealed that Camille, too, posed in Playboy, though her spread was only for a supplement. In my early 20s, it wasn't coming off of a big murder trial that my girlfriend was killed. <laughs> LVP can't be anyone but herself, so she instigates Allison to begin talking about her psychic powers. Allison, with her e-cig in hand, claims that she's off the clock, but when Kyle pushes her a bit, Allison gleefully tells her that she'll be getting divorced. She sees two marriages in Kyle's future. Kyle says this is good, as Mauricio is her second husband, which naturally disappoints Allison. He will never emotionally fulfill you. Ever. Know that. Things go left when they start sparring and Faye gets involved. This turns into a rehashing of the epic fight from New York, and it becomes clear that Faye and Allison are there simply to fight for their respective leaders. Somewhere along the way, Kim Richards and Taylor Armstrong get into it as well. Oh, no, 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 no. They've had a bit of a B-plot feud going on this season as well. The ladies finally flee the scene, leaving Camille, her sidekick Dee Dee, who had been mostly mute this whole dinner, and Allison to say the meanest things about Kyle. I can tell you when she will die and what will happen to her family. I love that about me. Poor Dee Dee looked like she wanted to crawl out of her skin. Back outside, Kyle yells at Kim for getting into it with Taylor, and she, along with everyone else, ends up leaving Kim to ride home alone in the limo, ignoring her calls. The storyline is just fantastic. It's without a doubt the most memorable scene from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. There are so many iconic quotes from this scene alone, it's bonkers. It was total chaos. Even the confessionals narrating the scene were top tier. There's a very good reason Alison Dubois is still remembered to this day. Know that. All right, so let's wrap this up by pointing out the obvious issue with having psychics in the real housewives world, which is, of course, all of these women aren't easily Googleable. Let's take the example of the psychics on The Real Housewives of New York knowing that Leah had just lost a grandmotherly figure. While this could be impressive and proof that they can speak with the dead, it could also be proof that they can operate Instagram, as she had just posted about her grandmother's death on November 10th and 12th, and then posted that she was in Salem on November 13th. They wouldn't even need to scroll on her page. Same with Robin Psychic. He could really be in touch with her ex-friend, or he could have just seen the sister circle in season one where Robin talks about the situation. It's hard to say for certain what the absolute truth is. 
In terms of the accuracy of predictions we're able to look at now, more things have been proven false rather than true. And Bele says that Kenya wouldn't be long in this world, which was eerie until she clarified it wasn't about death. Kenya did skip out on season 11, so that could be kind of painted as accurate, but she came back for season 12 and at least as of season 14 is still on the show. Mama Elsa said Larsa was worried about a man and would be poor in 10 years. This was shot around 2010. Larsa and Scotty ended up getting divorced in 2016, so they had a few more years together, but she did end up being right in the long run. And while Larsa is not worried about money right now due to her OnlyFans success, in 2020, 10 years after Mama Elsa's prediction, she did have a falling out with the Kardashians. I don't know if that's what she was seeing, but I'll put it out there. As of now, Kyle and Mauricio are still going strong. There have been rumors from time to time, notably in season 4, that he was cheating on her, but they both have always denied them. Alison Dubois did say it would be after the kids are grown. Portia just celebrated her bat mitzvah, so she's 13, so they've still got a good 5 years, if Allison is correct. I guess that only leaves us with one true mystery. Is Melissa's sister out there somewhere? We have no choice but to wait with bated breath. So that wraps things up for today. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed the video and give this video a thumbs up. Um, and let me know in the comments if you believe in any of these psychics or just psychics in general. I always think this stuff is kind of interesting and I'm just not really sure what to believe. Um, but if you want to talk about housewives in general, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Both of my ads are deeply super fish. I'll put the links below. But I will see you in the next video. Bye. And then I realized, oh my God, that's who it is. It's Faye Resnick, the morally corrupt Faye Resnick. And I have to say that I loved your spread.